what are we up to today? Well, we're clearly looking at an engine bay, um, but we're looking at something fairly important here. Now, most of you might notice or might recognize this set of fins here as an alternator, and you would be correct. That's a 12 volt alternator with a vacuum pump. That is attached to an Isuzu 4BD1T engine, which is what they put in the six wheel drive Land Rovers, and the T stands for turbo. A little turbo but it adds about an extra 40 horses what we're doing today though is this guy here this is the 24 volt alternator that we've just freshly reconditioned uh, my senior technician aka my father um, did uh, worked his craft on this and uh, replaced all the bearings and the spring washers and has repainted it cleaned it scrubbed the crap off the top of the diodes rewired it it's in pretty well as good nick as it's going to get um, we've just finally, with the help of my neighbour, managed to mount this back into the six-wheel drive. And today, a pair of B44 belts showed up. These are 17mm V belts. Hopefully I measured correctly, and we'll be able to get them around the tensioner and onto this belt. But um, the first thing I've got to do before that is figure out if I've got it aligned properly. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that, but I think if I get a stick, I'll figure it out. Um, but it does look reasonably well aligned, but I'm going to go find something and find a way to get that uh, measured and make sure it's aligned properly. So we'll be back in a minute. You know what, after some inspection, I think it's probably fairly close in alignment. So we're going to remove one of these belts, see if we can fit this on here. Now I measured 1120 mil belt and I think I was about right they had an 1120 mil belt exactly the measurements that I measured so must have done something right let's see how I can get this on it could be a bit of a challenge I probably won't film the process but I'll see how I go and we'll cut to my answer to how frustrating this is now this camera angle is largely guesswork partly for the fact that one of the more unpleasant side effects of MS and the brain lesions I have as a result is laying on my back causing me to have pretty well non-stop vertigo or head spins I guess and it's kind of frustrating but what I'm doing here is I'm using a pry bar here to push the belt past the plastic cowl around the radiator so that I can get it on top of the main engine pulley which should drive the belt and I've got to do this twice I think I've got it over that pulley. I think being the key word here. Is it up here? I have to excuse my neighbours, they are having some argument about something. Coppers have visited them twice already in the last hour. I'm not privy as to what sort of problems they're having, but they don't really make themselves really over into talking about it, and I'm not actually that interested. So, um, I think we're going to go back over the top now to see if we can get this one around the pulleys. And we'll go from there. You know, hindsight's an interesting thing. I really reckon I should have pulled this plastic cowling off before I started. Um, <laughs> now I can't get to it because the bull bar is too far out. So step ladder it is. Um, let's see, can I see a belt over the top of that pulley? There we go. Oh, now my hand is stuck. Yay. All right. It's that one. That's that one on there. So yep, definitely gonna need to adjust that tensioner. But, there's our belt tracking. Um, oh, I'm on the third pulley, that's why. We'll move this guy over to the second. All right, that's good. Oh, 17mm V belt. Looks like it's a bit big for the job. But I guess we'll see how we go. Um, oh, there's some alarms going off next door. But uh, that's not uncommon. And I think that belt is a little far over there. But yeah, we'll need to tension that up. But it's on, 
Now we're going to do number two. It's going to be fun. Um, I guess these belts will wear in. They really, I think, I've probably got enough here to sort of do the job, but, you know, I'll whack both on. I'll see how it goes if they have a catastrophic failure. This isn't going to stop me getting anywhere. It's just going to stop the 24-volt system charging and probably throw a hunk of rubber around the place. So, not the end of the world, but I'll try and get this guy in. The belts are in and they're tensioned and I think I've left some spatters under there. Um, they sort of fit. I'm a little uncomfortable about how wide these are, but now they're tensioned, they fit sort of okay. But I probably could stand to put narrower belts on there. For now, they'll work and crucially they miss the other belt by about one mil. <laughs> you can probably see along here if I move around that uh, the main belt and the secondary belt only just miss each other. Now, I want to test this, and the sun is rapidly setting, but I also want to check what's under all this insulation tape on this hulking grate plug, because before I fire this up, I want to make sure, and I think I'm going to need to lubricate this plug, I want to make sure that uh, nothing's awry in there, but there's only two wires under these, which is strange for an alternator, but this alternator is pretty strange on the inside anyway. It doesn't have an inner armature, it's just got a laminated steel core, um, but it has twin uh, windings on the outside with control windings in between them. Um, look, there's a bit of green in there, but you know what, I think I'm going to leave that on for the moment. Um, yeah, there's just two wires in there. They've just covered it in loads of insulation tape. We will neaten that up in the future once we're sure that things work. Now these connectors are huge and you have to put them on incrementally. You've got to do this thread up and then give it a push and do it up but I'm not sure I've put this on the right way around. Let me see if I can find the keyway or back it out. Oh, riveting TV isn't it? Watching me do up a giant plug but they are huge like that's my thumb so they're about eight, nearly 10 mil connections. Yes, keyway is at the top. It's obviously had one of these in here before, aside from the existence of the loom. The loom is trained to go around in this orientation. So do that up, give it a push, do it up a bit more, give it a push, do it up a bit more. This is requiring some serious arm strength, by the way. Hence why the heavy breathing in the camera. It's not because I'm trying to emulate an adult video. It's that I really want this plug on. Oh. Wow. This is better freaking work. Oh. I'm not looking forward to having to undo this. Although some, probably some electrical cleaner lube would probably not go astray in here. Is that in? No, we're going to go all the way up apparently. Which we probably do want to do given the current that's involved here. Alright, I think that's... No, nope, still a bit more to go. No, I think we're finally in. Wow, three minutes to do up a plug. Alright, let's just, let's get this thing started and see what happens. Right, our base voltage here is 26.1 volts, that's not too bad. I'm guessing the regulator set to 28 volts because that's what the placard says. Let's go find the keys. Now one thing we need to do before much else is pull this lever here and fold this seat forward, which is really hard to do one-handed. So let's watch all the other junk that's in here. Fold our seat. Now this is our 24 volt control panel which the breaker is on, a bit of wire so I can reach through the window and turn it on. Now, let's go around the other side and start this up. Right, dodgy shaky camera angle is what we're going to go with here. Turn this in, on. Right, so, let's give ourselves some light. So this is our 24 volt current gauge that we have yet to see actually move because we've never had a 24 volt alternator in here. 
Let's warm our glue plugs up for a minute and start her up. We'll see what's happening. No current red string on there yet. Let's bring the revs up a little bit. And I'm seeing that gauge move slightly. There's a very small movement on the gauge in the positive amps range. Wind our engine up a little bit. Alright, I'll go around and see what the voltage is saying. And we have 28, 29 volts almost. So we'll, uh, that's good. Let's put it under load. We're going to use our boiling vessel here, which pulls about 55 amps. Turn our isolation on, turn our relay on. Oh, and the revs just came down a tiny bit. Let's go around and see what the voltage says. So we're pulling a lot of current. We're at 27.5 volts. I'd say we're doing the job. That's good news. Back in the cab. <clears throat> The current meter didn't really move much when we pulled all that current. However, it's probably because my batteries were pretty well charged and even in the dusk light that we've got at the moment, they're still putting a few amps in. So I think probably we're doing all right. I'll know at some point in the future when this is happening. It'll probably, it's not gonna give me the full load on this because the batteries are gonna take that up. Um, I've gotta go and find out and do a bit of maths and homework find out if 29 volts is going to be too high for the two batteries I've got. We also need to let this idle for a bit before we shut it down, which we've done because it's got a turbo. But it works. I'm going to check under the bonnet to make sure nothing's self-destructed, but I think we've got a working 24 volt alternator now. All right, so something did self-destruct under here. We threw a belt off and the belt that's on well, it's made the top of that pulley really hot. So I've got to find out where that other belt went. It'll be hanging in there somewhere. All right, so in the meantime, while I've had to extract this belt, the neighbors have had a big brawl and I'm pretty sure the coppers are showing up again. What fun. Anyway, I've extracted the second belt for now. I'm reasonably sure these belts are too large for the job. But I'm going to leave that one on here for now. Aside from the fact that it's too much of a pain in the ass to get off, um, I think it'll work. The pulley getting hot on here could be a misalignment. It could be over tension. It could be the big belt. I'm pretty sure it's just because the belt's too big, but we'll figure that out later. Um, the bearings we put in this are the high temperature, high speed ones. They'll deal with the heat. Um, a bigger concern for me is this exhaust manifold. That runs right near it. I'm going to get some fiberglass wrapping for that and get that all sorted out. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to be all right. Um, at least for the moment, this will work, and I'll carry a spare belt. Uh, but this is not a showstopper if this doesn't work. I've still got solar to back it up. This is just because I'm going to be cooking a bunch of doing a bunch of um, cups of tea and cooking some stuff. It's, and we're probably, hopefully, planning to go to Tasmania at some point. And uh, if we do that, we're probably going to be doing it in winter at the shortest sunlight days of the year. So I don't think we can really rely on solar that far south. So we'll, it's nice to have the backup. So I think that's about it for now. It's getting dark. I want to go and have my dinner. I need to clean the grease off my hands. Um, MS is whipping my ass. I've had a long day today and I haven't had a rest today. Normally I get through about four hours before I'm useless. Today I've managed to push myself far more than that. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty well ready to collapse, which is evident by the head spins I'm getting when I lay under the car. So I've got my tool roll packed up. I've got my ratchet back in the place. And the neighbors are having an argument. So I think it's time to call it quits. We'll see you in the next one.